Hey folks, Steve here with another Axis Empires Ultimate Edition Torah 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 video for you today. This is going to be part uh, three, which is going to cover turn two, uh, which is the second winter turn of our uh, our winter season here, but we are technically now into 1942. Um, the uh, weather in the south monsoon continues to be muddy, so all along sort of this region here. Uh, and in the far north, which is really not campaign relevant for the scenario, it is snow. The Axis have enjoyed uh, the splendor of being able to spread out and attack a number of locations. And now we are fixing on Port Moresby and Singapore as major areas of concern after we uh, conquered Siam. Still not sure about the Siam situation. If I maybe should have done that differently, I, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like there's something else there that I could have done slightly differently, should have done even slightly differently. Um, but, but so it goes. Um, all right. So what else do we have uh, to accomplish here? Well, um, we've got uh, quit India in play, which means that by and large, we're not going to need to focus too much on India over here off camera. So we're going to really focus out there in the Pacific realm and what is left to do. We have made landings in the Philippines, and we've got Manila left to take, though that may be a little slow going. We'll certainly make an effort. We need to continue to get into the Malayan Peninsula after a detour in Bangkok to get in here, start working our way towards the, uh, the fortress at Singapore. We've got some things to do here uh, around uh, the Dutch East Indies or the Netherlands East Indies, NEI. Um, I, I am curious about, like, what does it take to conquer dependence or take control of dependence? Like, at what point do we say that the Netherlands East Indies is conquered? Um, and what happens to their dependence when they become conquered? That I'm a little less sure about, because when I look at, like, where where's the line drawn... Um, it seems to imply that we need control of Palembang, Batavia, and Surabaya to be, to, to conquer the Netherlands East Indies, and then, because I, because the Salabi, uh, I don't know how that's pronounced, guys, I'm so sorry, I don't hear, I read this stuff, I don't hear it said out loud, um, this dependent, you know, has a couple of cities of its own that we would maybe need to take. And then we have Dutch New Guinea, which has its own stuff to take. And I just don't know what is required to, to take over time. Like, how exactly would we do this or operate this? I'm just not really sure. But I can tell you that my main goal is just to get at least Batavia and Balikpanan, because that's all that really really, really matters, and the Allies currently have a dearth of support markers, and we don't need to necessarily worry too much about counter-invasions for the moment. So we've got a lot of things at our disposal we're going to be able to make use of, as the Axis at least. So we're going to continue here uh, with the, the Axis turn very quickly and say, hey, we've got our Operation Z and our Z actions. We're going to declare war um, on the Netherlands East Indies. And I will point out that the Netherlands East Indies does have a reserve unit that goes into the force pool. Um, not not a really an attacking unit, but one that we're going to have. And then we're going to have six uh, Z actions. And I've, I've used my little red dice to kind of mark out where we're going to go with that. Um, so here, uh, here, here, uh, here with the Tetsugeki marker, and then here for a uh, surprise reinforcement action and that's really just to help get um, some units in some particular places for uh, defense and and capability um, and that's really our main main driver there so uh, just to just to kind of follow that up right we are going to have a snlf marker that goes here we're also going to add a uh well Technically, it would be a, a blitz marker, because we get a blitz marker, so we can stick that there. Um, we're going to have 
S and a left marker here. And I guess I can put this away for the moment. Um, we can have an S and a left marker here. An S and a left marker here. And Tatsugeki marker at the same time. Which Blitz enables those guys over there just to make sure we get uh, into the region. And then finally, we're going to have a surprise reinforcement. And we're going to take one of our core up in Japan, and we're going to stick them in this dependent of the Marshall Islands. And the reason for that will be made clear soon enough. Um, okay, so, so far, so good. Uh, all, all of our actions are, are for the moment complete. And we will move into the support marker placement. Um, let me let me double check all my thoughts on this to make sure I'm getting it right, and uh, I'll I'll come back here in just a second. Okay, I think I have this right. <laughs> um, all right. So what what kind of marker action are we doing here? Um, remember, this is placing support, so we haven't done all the landings and all that fun stuff yet. We've got a. Troop scratch troop convoy in the Marianas because we have a key port in Anguitak here. We're going to be moving a unit. One of the surprise moves to this port is going to move from, I guess I could have put them anywhere, but um, I mean, I guess to differentiate, I could have put them right here. They're going to get into Wake Island and ensure that we have at least some defensive unit in Wake Island. We've got a scratch uh, transport here that's going to move this guy through the area, and we've used two ship markers in the Coral Sea, which is not affected by the monsoon issues, um, to be a troop convoy. And so we'll have a unit go swoop, and we'll have this SNLF guy go using one of these troop convoys swoop onto our SNLF beachhead, which is powered by a blitz marker as well which is going to be needed to make these guys blitz enabled to ensure we get Port Moresby and get the uh, column shift for our Marine unit. Um, our Tetsugeki marker over here is just going to help ensure we get into Malaya proper and can begin the process of moving further down the peninsula. And I think that's all we're going to have. Now, um, I am leaving uh, some stuff left on the table. So... Uh, we currently do not have uh, a, uh, in reserve in our force pool, we still have another troop convoy. I want to hold that back for now. We've also got our two carrier fleets held back for now and an air force held back for now. And that's just to help ensure that if there's anything else that, that needs to go on that we're worried about the allies doing later, we can stop them. Um, but we don't need to worry about that for a couple of turns, actually. So we've got a lot of, of play space here to leverage, um, and we're going to continue to do that. So um, that's the support marker placement. I don't think there's any other support marker stuff that we really want to do. I'm almost at the point where I just want to ignore the uh, the China Theater because there's not much more that I want to accomplish right now there. Uh, there's just not a whole lot. Maybe the one thing I can do... I can break this unit down and, uh, I mean, I guess I would want to do that maybe, um, just so I can get some more forces up to start making some headway in China itself, but I'm not trying super hard there, I guess is kind of my, um, my strategy of, of concern, uh, but everything else is going to go just fine, I think. So, uh, with that complete... Um, we would look at the yeah, organization, organizational movement, operational movement. So again, this is where we have uh, these guys move to here. This guy move uh, into here. This guy move, moves into Wake Island to defend it. And uh, as I look around the map, uh, we would have movement from here to here, and I would leave behind, um, let me 
make sure I'm not screwing this up. Um, yeah, we would have a detachment here left behind as these guys progress forward. And then, um, again, movement here. So we would see a shift up there and probably a move like that. What else? Um, well, uh, these guys probably starting to come down this way very, very, very slowly. Um, these guys move onto our marker here. Almost there you go. Uh, any other any other moves? Um, I think that's all well and good. And keep in mind we were also supplied here. We had to use our good supply marker, um, extending this guy out uh, to make the play that we're making at the moment with control over ball, allowing us to do that. And that's it for the. I think that's it for the operational movement. I don't see. Any other obvious moves that we need to make right this second? Um, and so now it just gets into uh, the combat phase. So again, we have a blitz ac action. Um, first thing, just to make sure we get it out of the way, and I'm, and I'm able to do this quickly without worrying too much about it, we're sticking our detachment markers into here, and I'll just move these guys off so that I don't need to worry about them anymore when they get their gun. Um, which is going to give us the victory points that we need, and then we're going to have we're going to have some combats. Um, I might try to make something happen up here. Uh, we're probably going to have some kind of combat over here, potentially. Uh, obviously, combat here, combat here, and um, I think I'll take care of that stuff um, off camera for speed, and we'll come back and kind of show the aftermath. Okay, well, here's the aftermath of various things. Um, I did try some attacks in northern China. They weren't really getting anywhere. Um, I ended up having to correct something and adding an air force to this area. I began because I could and because I needed it. I didn't realize I needed it. Um, I think I need to pay closer attention to the odds shifts because some of these attacks could have been very, very bad or not quite what we needed. Um, we ended up rolling not great here, but with the column shifts... Um, we lost a unit, but we destroyed that uh, defending British unit, which now means we can start marching down. Um, and it, it actually took a reserve movement to get this guy uh, moved forward. Um, another unit kind of moving forward here. Um, so kind of like not a great... Uh, not great, but I mean, we kind of got what we needed. But boy, we're going to be attacking. We're going to be attacking. Uh, poor, uh, <laughs> poor Singapore with not a lot. So we're going to probably have to pile on capability if we're going to if we're going to capture it. Um, we did get uh, into Port Moresby, but here's the thing: I had a terrible. Um, like column, and I only managed to get by by rolling a one. So on a knife's edge, and really what should have happened is that this invasion should have failed, and it didn't, but it, it probably should have because I had two to two, so one to one odds. Um, the city shift offset by uh, our SNLF marine shift as an elite unit, but then we had another shift down because of mud, and so we were rolling effectively on the... Uh, one to two, and we got an exchange, and so um, that was still enough. By you know, we took the hex, uh, and you know, we're able to to take it with the loss of a unit, which is what we expected. But now we are solidly in uh, Port Moresby, so uh, you know, from that perspective, we're we're doing just fine, um, and that provides us uh, a. Multi-zone port it gives us a port uh, down here in the Coral Sea um, that is closer to this area. I'm trying to think, like, you know, in game terms, what's the value of Port Moresby? Um, I don't think I could articulate that right now. Um, we've kind of left this stuff all behind, but without a British um, 
detachment there, there's only so much they can really achieve to get back into these areas. So we're, we're kind of okay pushing this direction, but we're going to have to maintain supply if we're going to do any other operations here. I guess that the nice thing is, um, well, I don't know. I really don't know, like, what does, what does having this get us that having Rabal doesn't? And that I'm not sure about. Um, it does affect the U.S., uh, some U.S. effects, but it's not enough right now to really do anything. So I'm not sure about it, but the scenario wants us to take it, so we're taking it. Um, we've got Wake Island defended, and that's all good. Um, we'll be able to take off some of these detachment markers next turn. I did pull off a couple of detachments, uh, removal, uh, from areas I didn't think needed them, but I can't place them yet. But I'm going to need to place them here to hold that port open in Malaya. Um, probably several other places I'm going to want to get some detachment markers because uh, we're going to have to keep moving, keep punching, uh, keep doing stuff around here um, as we can. But I think, I think, besides some additional reserve movement here um, that I forgot, there's there's not much else to do, and that's the Axis side of the turn. So, um not a whole lot to, to get excited about, but generally uh, pretty good. I don't think we can consider this a conquering of the Netherlands East Indies, but we did grab the respective strategic hexes that we cared about. So for the moment, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm sure in a different from a different perspective, you would be looking at trying to land anywhere and everywhere, right, with some additional NS SNLF markers, but... I'm not sure how that's supposed to go, and I'm not going to worry too terribly. I'm not going to worry too much about it at the moment. Um, again, if I just look at like what's the what's the conquer uh, state here? Um, yeah, all capital, all cities. Um, But we're, we're but that's not the case. Um, I don't think so. We're not gonna. We can't say we've conquered the Netherlands East Indies yet, but we did grab the important locations we needed to grab. I guess this this opens up the door, you know, maybe for the Allies to come back into this region, depending on how how they operate. But um, we'll we'll see where we can get to with that. Um, okay, so um, that's the end of that, and now we'll we'll start to shift over into the Allied turn. Um, unfortunately for the Allies, they, they really don't have very many options. So when we look at um, the, the seasonal stuff that they've got, so the Allies are going to look around and say, well, what, what can I do uh, at the moment? Um, you know, we take our, our troop convoys off the map and have those guys in, in reserve and you know what can what can we do uh political events nothing support segment we don't have much in the way of support to send we don't even have much to move around to be quite honest um our very best bet would be uh look right now um yeah, boy, they just don't have much. They don't have much they can do. Uh, they don't really have much in the way of the support markers that they would want. Um, maybe their main thing being uh, if they can, you know, do they give up Rangoon to defend? I guess that's a thing we could do. You know, would it be worth it, though? Um, prob probably not, but, I mean, if we're going to play... For the end of the world, um, you know, I suppose we, we could. So let's say, so what would we need to be able to do that? Um, oh, we'd need more support markers than we can place right now. So that's a problem. Okay, never mind. Never mind, not going to be able to do that. Organization segment, I don't think there's much to be done there either. Um, I don't know if I can, can't do much with him. Um... We don't have any replacements we can use right now. Combat phase, is there any combat to achieve? Um, you know, if anything in China, but I feel like that's really non-relevant at the moment. 
reserve movement. Um, not much for us to really do there either, uh, to be quite honest. If anything, it's going to be moving units around, and right now there's really nowhere nowhere obvious to go that we can easily reach with our current um, with our current deployments. At most, we could maybe move uh, an American corps somewhere, maybe over here, but that's not really going to get them anywhere significant. So, uh, yeah, we can roll for China aid. Um, I guess when we get to the conditional events, so yeah, you do that, uh, but we roll the warlord result, which means no, no additional steps in China, um, which means this very quickly goes to our delay segment, and I guess I'll roll off for that. Yeah, the, the allies just don't have much to work with here, guys. There's just not... Not much for them, um, and uh, that's going to be a problem. So yeah, let me uh, let me go figure out the delay stuff. Okay, here's the turn track. So just a couple of things. The Allies actually got some cool stuff, like their Philippine unit back, uh, which which could get used um, as we go into the next turn. I'm not sure. Um, and everything else just kind of floated out from here. Uh, the Japanese are only getting one of their troop convoys back uh, in, in any near-time thing. So when we go into this, the Japanese are going to get uh, a, a colonial unit that they're probably not going to get to use because it's the Indian one and our troop convoy. The Allies getting their Philippine unit back in the force pool. They do get some blessed air protection, which they're going to have to think hard about where that's going to be, um, they've got some supply challenges that may that may matter here. Uh, they may be able to defend uh, defend Singapore with these this air force, so that might be something they're going to look to do. But uh, that's it. So the Allies not having really very many options, to be honest. Um, let me go place these markers down, and then we're going to start. We're going to get right into uh, the spring turn where the both sides are going to have additional markers to leverage here, uh, or, you know, new cards to play, I should say. All right, heading into the spring turn, the Japanese will be playing Victory Disease. So they get an Air Force, another Force Pull. I've already pulled that out. They get two uh, replacement steps, which, um, you know, to be honest, we've, we've kind of got a good number in Japan just kind of sitting, hanging out for the moment. Uh and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we have to do the victory stuff, don't we? Um, so again, I, boy, I forgot to do this. Uh, we look at the board. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, green strategic hexes underneath our control with one gray one uh, out on the board under an active ally, uh, which what... Yeah, let me double check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we have an allied collapse marker in here still. Um, minus one for Manila is six, which puts us in the two victory point space on the turn track, which is going to help us uh, dramatically here on these last two turns, both for delay marker stuff and this political events segment die roll work which we're going to have here so we're going to we're going to do that so let's see uh, roll one die we're going to add two and we get bonsai uh, a five plus two a seven which hits the uh a six so we get bonsai which i think that's new let's go look at bonsai 37.2 37.2 uh, must do one of the following. Immediately conduct one attack. That includes a Japanese unit. Um, okay. Or take one Axis support unit from the Axis force pool and place it in the delay box. Um, the Axis faction may then select one support unit of the same type from the Allied force pool and place it in the same delay box. Ooh, well that could be useful. Um, the Allies currently have an Air Force, and we could push it off with our Air Force, which uh, could be valuable. Is there any attacks that we can really do right now that would help us? Um, 
that we couldn't do otherwise right now. Well, we could attack Manila. Um, that would kind of help seal the deal there. Uh, but we're going to do that anyway. And I don't want the allies to protect Singapore with an air unit. So we're going to go ahead, I think, and we're going to do the, the, the second one. So the only support marker of true value to the allies is going to be moved to the delay box for the cost of a Axis one. So two air forces now go into the delay box. I think that's a great, that's a great pick. Great pick. We'll do that. Um, okay, so the uh, the political events part of the card is over. There's really not much more to talk about here. We don't get any blitz markers, and we know we don't get any more Z actions. So a lot of that big oomph that we were getting before is kind of gone now, and there's not much more for us, though I should point out next turn. Uh, we'll get to roll on that political events uh, table again, and that may get us um, something something else that could be uh, as good at that point. So uh, now we're going to simply jump back into the normal sequence of play with the support marker segment. Uh, so we've got to send some of our stuff to the delay box. Uh, the scratch convoys that we were using and our surface fleets, which we were using to... Uh, do some to support the offensive against Port Moresby, basically, is what, what that was. All these guys are going to go to the delay box in the return to base phase. Um, see if there's anything else outstanding there. We'll have our, our good marker here that we'll hold back for a second and figure out what we want to do there. Um, and uh, let's see. Where we're going to end up having some stuff happen over here. I'll double check in a second. And I don't think any of the. Oh, yeah, this guy's going to return to base as well. And go uh, out there in the delay box. Uh, and now I think that's it. And then the final thing being uh, for our remaining uh, marker that was out there for beachhead cleanup, I need to see. Uh, about that. So I think there's something we need to do there. Form an inland advance, take a unit on the beachhead mark and place it adjacent. This is not movement. Okay, perfect. So we'll be moving this guy here and we'll move that. Easy peasy. Um, okay, so now we're going to have the uh, organization segment. I don't know that there's a whole lot that we need to concern ourselves with there. Um, I think we're doing just fine. Uh, the only thing I wish I could do, and I don't really have, well, I guess we, we can move some troops around. Um, I can certainly look to do that if I feel the need to. Um, so we're gonna probably, let's see, put a detachment marker here. And we're going to put a detachment marker probably over. Uh, well, I think I had another one somewhere. I've lost track of it now um, that I was going to want to put. Um, and now I've forgotten where. Oh, maybe uh, in Hong Kong is where I was going to put this guy. And let this guy do some maneuvers. Yeah, I think that works. Um, what else? We're, we're going to remove some detachments. And so, like, I don't really have a need for Okinawa to have a detachment marker in it. Um, because we have, well, it is a key. And that's probably the reason why we need to stick somebody there. Um, we technically wouldn't need Iwo Jima because uh, it is a Japanese dependent. So if we wanted to, for the purposes of this scenario, we could, we could pull that guy off. Um, because we do control truck, it's not as important to have Palau. Uh, and we also have Davao here. So I could, because these are Japanese dependents, we still control these. If we had to get back in there, we could. I may pull him off. Well, uh, I don't know. Um, 
yeah, we'll, we'll pull him off. It doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, I think we're otherwise good to go um, and be able to continue moving. Uh, maybe the other one I would pull off would be like, well, I don't know. This, this one we could pull off if we're not going to move this guy anywhere, and I don't expect to, we could pull him off. Um, so we've got an assortment of detachments that we're, we're gaining back. And then um, for support markers, it's a question of like, do we want to place our scrapped convoys with our normal convoy to move the units around? And I think that's worthwhile to do here. It's just going to be a matter of like where, where are we actually taking some units. So, so one thing I, I definitely want to do is I want to get some additional units uh, into Rabal. So we've got a hold there and moving this guy. So we would put two scratch convoys there because we have our scratch or our key port here in truck. We can do that. And just to show from operational movement, like he's going to end up in Rabal. So it just can't be taken easily. Um, and then for our regular troop convoy, uh, what I would want to do is probably... Um, shoot, I wish I just... I wish I had just one more convoy. Um, I'm going to send this guy to... there and we'll eventually be moving him around as well but I think for the moment that that's good enough um, everywhere else is is good enough for the moment I, I don't see what else more I can seek to achieve um, we're gonna be able to cover and defend the rest of the the allied situation or the the, uh, the operations here shortly um, I don't think the allies are really do a whole lot more Let's see, role on colonialism, ally support resistance, failure of command or bonsai. So, yeah, the allies don't have don't have much there. Um, so, yeah, I think we would just go right into the combats. Uh, or, I'm sorry, operational movement. I'm sorry. Uh, operational movement. And I've already done some of that here, as you guys have seen. This is another one of these, like, I don't have a, I don't have a strong need to... Be moving around a lot of guys. Um, I certainly have an issue where uh, I need more sea lift coming out of Japan. Without those Z actions, it's kind of hard to move folks around, but I at least have defenders out there, period. Uh, and so we would, I think, move these guys like so. And I would. Um... Oh man, I don't have. Uh... I don't have exactly what I need here. Um, I'd have to leave somebody behind like this, and we'd be attacking one-to-one, -one, and I don't want to do that at the moment. So I'm <laughs> making, making slow progress, but this is not exactly how I wanted this to go. Um, not how I wanted this to go, necessarily. I've still got more stuff that I need to transport around. And I don't have the forces at hand to do all this transporting I really want to do. So I've got to keep I've got to keep this port open, um, which is not going to give me what I need to make my attacks. Uh, and if I lose a step here, it's just not going to be what we need yet. So that we're we're kind of slowed down by my poor play earlier. I think there. Um, but we're still in a win condition, so this is more just, you know, trying to get in a good position where the allies can't come back. Uh, if we look at the Philippines, we would have, um, four to one odds, uh, shifted for, so we'd be at three to one odds. And let's see, where's my combat chart? Uh, an exchange result, which um, I'll take because um, 
can just advance after combat and lose this guy. And now we have Manila. And that wraps that up. I don't think, you know, 101. 101, what, what, what's the best that I could get? Um, I don't think any of that's worthwhile. So we're going to hold off here for the moment. Um, and we're, we're, we're not going to be able to take Singapore probably until next turn. Um, but that's okay. Again, we're in a win condition. So uh, I don't think the Axis does any other actions. We, we've accomplished what we've accomplished. Uh, the Allies have really no, no good options left to follow here. So we'll flip it over to the Allied turn. What do they do? Well, they're going to play their new card, right? The uh, Doolittle Raid. So uh, we would remove Plan Orange. We would, if this were Shifts Krieg, we'd do the Doolittle Raid. And now we're going to, um, uh, well, it's good the Axis took Manila because now they can't build a Philippine unit. We're going to roll a die, and we're going to add the plus two to it. And we get a six. So Bonsai. Now, I guess what is unknown is what's the... Does the U.S. get this, and what shape does that even take? 37-2. Uh, the Axis faction must do one of the following. Conduct one attack. Uh-oh. That includes Japanese unit. Um, yeah, we certainly don't want to use a support marker right now. Um, so no real options there. So where can we attack? We can attack in China. Do we, do we want to go ahead and let this be a... Uh, an attack here and get that one to one. Um, <laughs> we have to roll good. So I think we just try to do an attack in China. Um, that might be the only thing we can really expect to be able to do here. So we could do a two to one attack there. I think that's what we'll do. We get rolled a two. Um, so DR1 result, so this guy retreats, and advance after combat like that probably is what we would do. So that satisfies that, and then the Americans get one replacement point, which, one infantry replacement point. They don't have very many options, um, so the best thing they can try to do is put something maybe in the Panama Canal box or French Polynesia. Oh no, we can't go into French Polynesia, so maybe Panama Canal. Um, and hope to move somebody in to defend the American perimeter, perimeter line. Um, tricky. Uh, Polynesian, yeah, Polynesia, Sea Zone, we could stick somebody in Western Samoa, uh, or Espiritu Santo, which might be valuable to try to do. Um, not a lot of great options there for the Americans, uh, for, for the one replacement step that they're going to get. Um, so when we go over to the Allied side, it is a matter of, you know, what troop convoys do they want to use? Can they try to leverage, um... Uh, uh, hmm. Well, now, now might be the time um, to do something. So we could do a troop convoy in the Bay of Bengal because Singapore sits on the Bay of Bengal and we could do this. Now, would I do this in the campaign game? Probably not, because we're giving up Rangoon uh, to do this. Um, but, you know, uh, it's something. It at least allows us to do 
do something of note. Um, and then in the Pacific area, what I might try to do here is um, stick some troop convoys off to the far area here and ship this guy into uh, New Caledonia, uh, or to, yeah, New Numea, and ensure that we've got some level of strength um, that allows American presence to defend Australia. Uh, and that's the kind of the only thing that, that we can do. We don't have the ability to create a beachhead anywhere. The Allies can't take the offensive. We're, we're really kind of shot, to be honest. Um, and, you know, otherwise, the best things we can try to do is to continue to, uh, like, def defend China. And even that, I mean, there's no good... There's no really good moves that I can find. I mean, maybe there's like a some counter offensives we could try to launch. Um, I mean, if we did three to two, then it gets even worse. Here would be two to one, down to one to one, and that probably wouldn't do as much good. I just don't see the Allies having very many options uh, to make anything happen that would be helpful. So they're kind of they're kind of screwed. Um, all right, so uh, why don't I get ready for even the next turn, the last turn? Because I think we can wrap this scenario up here, guys. I think the, the Axis has had a convincing victory, and we'll be able to process this here very, very shortly. Okay, folks, I just played through the last turn. Um, the... Japanese managed to get another bonsai, which they used to deplete the Allied surface fleet with their own, um, basically removing any possibility that the Allies could do a beachhead landing anywhere on the map, which really means we retain control of Wake Island, uh, we retain control of Port Moresby, and... Um, uh, you know, we, we maintain control of our two VP status. Um, I will point out that uh, while we tried, even with a, a carrier strike, we did not take Singapore. We failed. Uh, it was a long shot, and we didn't get it. We did move in and grab uh, Rangoon and continue to hold Siam. So that's a nice kind of stopping point for the the axis at the moment uh, we didn't really get anywhere in china but that's okay um and we we you know if we just look at the whole situation across the the scenario um we were shifting our detachments um we took control of at least the important parts of the netherlands east indies i'm not sure what's going to happen here with like you know we could have moved units in here. Would that have done anything? Uh, we would eventually see the Netherlands East Indies units pop up somewhere. There's only one unit, but like, where is it going to go that makes a difference? Who knows? Um, the fact that, you know, the Allies could potentially land in here and have a naval base would be a concern. So I'd want to figure out, like, how can I, what's the right way to conquer the Nether Netherlands East Indies? And if someone can help me understand, I would really appreciate that. Like, I don't think I need to control every city and every dependent. I need to control the the main home country of the Netherlands, East Indies, but I'm, I'm going to have to double-check what that is. So in a campaign game, that might really matter for us. Um, we got really lucky with Port Moresby, uh, and if we didn't get lucky, we actually would have failed the scenario um, because we, we would not have had control of Port Moresby. That's kind of it. Um, but I also feel like I didn't do Malaya very efficiently, and that's to my detriment. I could have done that very differently. I could have done much better uh, in that area than I did, and I just didn't prepare well for it. Um, I think my Philippines campaign went just just fine. I think I did well there. Um, and even even just right now, you know, the Japanese enjoying a minus two uh, to their delay DRMs is, is really strong. Uh, on the very last go, though, I should point out that the Japanese rolled very badly on their delay segments. They had a bunch of Air Force stuff that wasn't going to come back for like four more turns. 
in, in one surface fleet that got kicked out with the deep six. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I think this would be like a above average, you know, Pacific blitz from like history because yeah, we did get Port Moresby, um, Singapore, it's, it's days are numbered. Um, and they gave up Burma to do it, which again, we would not have done in a campaign game. So, you know, all things considered, I think the Japanese are doing just fine. I, the one thing that really kind of is tricky to me is, you know, I have a bunch of steps in Japan um, that could have been sent elsewhere, but should also be used for home defense, right? But I don't have a good sense of, like, what, what, what I, I, one, I left, left an SNLF unit up here that I should have, with the Z action, put somewhere that would have provided greater benefit as a marine landing. That might have actually helped us a lot over here, and I didn't do that. Um, that that might have been a big difference maker had I used the NSLF properly. So um, I don't think I need to do a whole separate video about a, a, a post-mortem here. I think what I've learned is that as the Japanese and by Senso, you have to keep a really careful eye on your force pool and whether or not you should start pulling off detachment markers so in the next turn you can place them. You can't take them off first and place them in the same turn. You have to remove them, or you place them first, I think, and then you remove them. So, like, if we are going to need to shift our detachments around, you have to be very thoughtful about where you're going to do that and how rigid of a defense perimeter are you going to have. Are you going to have redundancy, or are you going to seek to have a more widespread coverage, and what's the cost of that? Here, I mean, we, we certainly, if not for the victory conditions, uh, could have been talking about landing in uh, Australia proper, but again, we, we would have ended up at some point reaching the end of our, uh, our logistics uh, capability because we simply just wouldn't have had um, anywhere to go. The, the opposite or the offset there would maybe be we stick a logistics marker down here and just kind of hold Australia. That'd be interesting. Uh, if we tried to do that. Alternatively, we put um, our logistics marker somewhere in Siam and then be able to make a real push into India. So I feel like there's like, you know, we, we have a lot of possibilities. Uh, if this were a campaign game, where do we want to go? What do we want to try to achieve? Um, I think this scenario was certainly impacted by the poor delay die rolls of the Americans where really they, they didn't get their carrier fleet back. They didn't get any of their fleets back. They could not contest the Japanese at all, but I guess that's part of why this is a training scenario that is easily played solitaire because the Japanese really are going to enjoy the fun here of what they want to do. And, and I could even see a, a desire to replay this training scenario a couple of times, solitaire as the Japanese, just to get a really good feel for like, what's the most efficient way for me to be moving this stuff around the map? What do I need to try to be achieving on a regular basis to get to where I want to be? Um, I think that's a, a pretty important part of the puzzle uh, of this training scenario. Um, but it's given me enough of a sense that I think we can dive into a, a bigger scenario. And I do think I want to look at Schiff's Krieg. I think now is the time I should start looking at that. I'm a little nervous be, because it's going to mean a whole lot more counter stuff that we're going to have to watch out for. Um, but, you know, I think we can handle it. And it being a 1944 scenario that I'm going to want to play, Divine Wind... I think is what it is. Um, that should pose a, a very nice difference where the allies are on kind of the the surge uh, and we, we see the opposite side of this for the progression of uh, the campaign. So um, I hope this was somewhat interesting to you. I could see where this is a much harder scenario to really give life to because it is shorter. Um, a lot of it comes down to the support marker game and the delay DRMs. I really didn't focus much in China uh, because the victory points or the victory things I needed to get were really out here in the Pacific. Um, but it was a good, a good tryout of the way the game operates, and I think we can um, expect uh, some goodness in the next one. So I hope this was entertaining to some degree uh, for you again. Um, if you learned something or you've got commentary on the play, please let me know as I prepare for a much bigger venture into Dicenso. We'll see you in the, the next one when we get to that. Uh, in the meantime, take care and keep on gaming.